The pinnacle of all awards in sports is the championship trophy at the end of the season. Each year, the competitors and teams fight for the right to hoist the often iconic awards. From the Stanley Cup to the Vince Lombardi Trophy, sometimes certain teams and athletes can go years without claiming their first championship. In hockey, it took the St. Louis Blues 52 years to win their first Stanley Cup, while on the NASCAR side, Kevin Harvick had to wait a staggering 13 years to claim his first Sprint Cup championship. While there is no guarantee a driver or team will ever reach the championship level, Level, they're often drivers that most fans cheer for each season who have been around for a long time but have come up short in the title fight time and time again. If one of those drivers does manage to win the championship, it always tends to be a massive party amongst the faithful fans and the driver's team. In the world of the NASCAR Penny Series, one driver took quite a while to win a title after being around the series since day one. I'm Alex Gallagher and on this 12th edition of After the Flag, we're going back to the Penny Series to analyze one of the most interesting and hectic championship seasons in recent memory. A party 14 wins in 13 years in the making, Jason Hathaway's 2020 NASCAR Penny Series title would go down as one of the most popular in series history. Sit back, strap in, and crack open your favorite bottle of champagne as our party begins back in Cascar in 2004. Hathaway made his Cascar debut for the Fordham team driving the number 76. Scoring one top 10, Hathaway would take 2005 off before coming back full force in 2006. Driving what would become his iconic number 3 for his father-in-law's team, Ed Hackinson Racing, Hathaway scored his first Cascar Top 5 at Cayuga. When Cascar became NASCAR in 2007, Hathaway naturally made the jump over. Bringing sponsor Snap-on Tools with him, his inaugural season would see Hathaway finish with one Top 5 at the Bowmanville Speedway and another 8 Top 10s. Hathaway would score his first Pinty Series win in 2008. In what would be a very average season, Hathaway stunned the NASCAR world by winning the 2008 Dodge Ram 250 at the core of the Speedway to close the season. Starting in 13th, Hathaway motored up through the field, taking the lead away from DJ Kennington on lap 106. Leading the final 68 laps, the skies would open up, ending the race on lap 174, giving EHR and Hathaway their first career wins in NASCAR. Yeah, it was a great for us. We've been uh, we've been quick all year. We just our qualifying effort. I I haven't got that underway yet, but we uh, we always race good. We always race to the front. And uh, tonight's our night, man. It's rained it rained a little bit. We just can't get her dried off. So sorry we had ran so many laps in our caution, but I gave him a little show. Nose dropped the wall, burnt the tires off it. So gotta thanks Chaco, uh, Fast Eddie, Snap on. They had my third year of this car. Super eight, everybody, the crew, Julio Montanari, man. That guy works his ass off. Despite going winless for the next four seasons, Hathaway would still put up impressive numbers. With 10 top fives, including seven podium finishes, come 2013 and the number three would be back with a vengeance. Scoring two wins that season, Hathaway would see his then best points finish with an additional seven top fives. Hathaway would come home third in points behind DJ Kennington and Scott Steckley. Adding two more wins and a fifth place points finish in 2013, 2015 would see Hathaway make his closest shot at the title. Taking victory in the second race of the season at the Autodrome Chaudière, Hathaway dueled with rookie and future series champion Alex LeBay. After starting 13th, Hathaway battled his way through the field, taking the lead away from Scott Steckley two laps after the final caution restart. Despite challenges from LeBay, Hathaway would end up going back to back at Autodrome Chaudière. Hathaway would struggle at both Icar and St. Estache, but still managed to claim five top 10 finishes. Come CTMP in the fall and all eyes are on the Pinty Series as they serve as the opening race for the Truck Series weekend. Despite never winning on a road course in his NASCAR career, Hathaway would snatch the lead away from LP Dumoulin on the final restart, holding off the 47 to notch his first and only road course win to date, leading a total of three laps. The victory would put Hathaway within reach of the title and heading into the season finale at Kawartha, Hathaway just sat nine points back, tied with Andrew Ranger for second. In the finale, Steckley would nab the pole. Leading 47 laps, Hathaway took the lead away on lap 48 and disappeared into the sunset. Leading the final 203 laps, Hathaway needed some bad luck to strike the 22. Despite leading the most laps and collecting win number three on the year, Steckley held on for second place and took the title by a measly four points. We did everything we had to do and uh... Honestly, I didn't think we were going to come in here and lead the most laps, so we got that taken care of and qualified up front, so that gave us a real good chance to get up front, and uh, it was good. I didn't know if Scott was just kind of hanging behind me, knew where I was, I knew where he was, and if he finished second to me, that's cool. He wins the championship, so our plan in here was to come in here and win the race, and whatever happens, the points happens, and uh, to lose a championship to Scott, a three-time champion in a class act with his guys is... Uh, 
you know, I'm not disappointed at all. So I just in 2016, Hathaway announced he would be retiring from full-time competition at the end of the season. Having a solid year, Hathaway scored what would have been his final win in the season finale in Kawartha. He would race three events in 2017, scoring a best finish of 8th at CTMP. Moving to a team ownership role for 2018, Ed Hackinson Racing would hire Cole Powell to drive the famous Kubota 3 for that year. Powell would score a win at race number 2 in Saskatoon, but come season's end, Hathaway would drop a bomb on the NASCAR world. Being off track just wasn't cutting it for Hathaway, and with help from Kubota, he would be back full time for 2019 in the good old orange number 3 Camaro. Now, Hathaway has a reputation for being a track closer. He won the final races at both Barry Speedway and Kawartha Speedway, and he added two more tracks to that list in 2019. First up, we have Riverside in Anaganish, Nova Scotia, taking advantage of a wild final restart to pass Kevin Lacroix and make it to the finish first. Taking his first win of the year, Riverside Speedway was not included on the original 2020 calendar, and plans to return to the facility are still unknown. We are in NASCAR overtime and back underway. Hathaway and Kennington, trial number two. Great restart for the top three. Everyone else is falling back a little bit. Here goes Lacroix looking for the lead. The 74 to the inside. There's contact. Hathaway is up to the outside. Hathaway moves up. Lacroix to the lead. Twenty nineteen was also the final year of the historic Autodrome Saint Eustache, a mainstay on the schedule since two thousand and eight. It was announced the track would be shutting down for twenty twenty, as the land of the speedway was bought by Hydro Quebec with the intent to be redeveloped. With the drivers aware that this would be the final race, each driver wanted this win bad. Two drivers were the favorites during the weekend: hometown boy Kevin Lacroix and two thousand seventeen series champ Alex LeBay. The two qualified one two and led a combined one hundred and sixty five laps. However, neither driver would see victory lane. Celebrating the birth of his newborn son Maxon, Jason Hathaway promised he would bring his newborn son home a trophy, and he made good on that promise. Leading the final 85 laps for taking the lead away from LeBay, it was an emotional victory for Hathaway who would score the final win at St. Eustache in honor of the newest addition to his family. One more lap around St. Eustache for the NASCAR PT Series. The Lucas Oil 250. Man, oh man, Jason Hathaway has opened that advantage. Kevin Lacroix In 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic hit the racing world hard. What was set to be an amazing schedule with the series' first ever dirt race scheduled, it was a gut punch when the series' opening weekend came and went with no racing to be had. That is, until Tony Spateri from Pinty's and NASCAR joined forces to bring Canadians the Pinty's Fan Cave Challenge. Six races, three double headers, and no room for error. With Hathaway being a specialist at the short tracks, the announcement that Jucasa Motor Speedway, Sunset Speedway, and the newest addition, Flamborough, would serve as the three locations of the double headers, that was a bit of a kickstart for Hathaway to go for the title. In the first event of the season at Sunset, Hathaway finished ninth after tangling with Kevin Lacroix and LP Dumoulin. He would bounce back in the second race of that double header, leading 101 laps en route to win number one. Following that up next week at Flamborough, leading all 125 laps in race one to extend his points lead over Lacroix, then finishing runner-up to Lacroix in race two. Come Jucasa, and Hathaway was ready to lock in the title. Winning the first race at Jucasa after starting fifth, Hathaway's dominating season was about to come full circle. A third place finish in the sixth and final race of the season would lock up Hathaway's very first NASCAR championship. Gapping Kevin Lacroix by 14 points, Hathaway was able to celebrate something he has chased for nearly 13 years, the Pinty Series title. It's been emotional when you've won races previously. It's been emotional this season. What are the emotions that are going through your head right now as you've secured the championship? Very special. I've been doing this too long, I think. <laughs> Pretty cool. Took us a long time to get here, but uh, we're all good. We're here. Following his record season, Hathaway announced he would be stepping down from the role of full-time driver, shifting over to a driver development role with the team. The new arrangement would see the famous number three being driven by a handful of development drivers, while Hathaway would serve as a driver coach and mentor. 
In addition to his Pinty Series success, Hathaway has dabbled in both the K&N Pro Series and the Camping World Truck Series. In 2013, Hathaway would run a one-off K&N East race for Jeff Spraker at the number 37 at Greenville Pickens. Hathaway would finish 18th, four laps down. He would venture into the Truck Series in 2017, making his debut for Bolin Motorsports at Canyon Tire Motorsport Park. Hathaway would finish 15th, completing all the laps, and would get the opportunity to drive one final race that season, this time at Phoenix for Premium Motorsports. Despite finishing three laps down, Hathaway would come home for an incredible 11th place finish. In a race that saw only 14 trucks running at the end, Hathaway kept his nose clean, avoided the carnage to earn a well-fought result. Jason Hathaway is living proof that age is nothing but a number. Despite Hathaway constantly mentioning how he is getting too old for this, he continues to prove week in and week out that he is one of the best in the business. Scoring 14 wins over the course of his career, his 2021 retirement means he will go out on top, leaving the sport as a champion. Happy retirement, Jason, and if things once again get too weird being atop the box, we will always say yes to you getting back on the racetrack. And thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate all the support for the channel. And as we close in on 200 subscribers, I have a special video planned for that. And I hope you guys will all enjoy it. I'd like to say thank you so much to all of our frontline workers for their continued efforts during the pandemic. I'm Alice Gallagher. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.